Hey, you. Caucasian. Hey, man. Hey, Blanco. Gringo. Pale face. I gotta tell you a secret. This might come as a surprise, but... White people, listen to this. In America in the early 1600s, you didn't exist. You didn't exist? I hate to break it to you like this. Listen to what your history books missed. What would be made white were completely unrelated, under-melanated people. Frankenstein. Collage by an optical illusion. The ultimate mirage called race. A social construction like Santa Claus. Back in the day, y'all either English or Scott, Irish Catholic or Protestant, land owning or not. But you can't have white without black in America. Back before we was Captain America, black wasn't a race. Africans came from different nations, like in Dongo, where Queen Nzinga reigned. Indigenous were the same. Pohatan, Doag, regardless of tribe, melanin didn't determine fate. Skin color didn't make a difference, no matter what hue your flesh was tinted in. Cause your complexion wasn't kinship, and pigment was insignificant. It didn't prevent you from certain privileges. This is the story of how skin became color. Color became race, and race became power. The creation of the Caucasian, white Aryan. It's the story of how white became American. The census says your race is white, don't believe the hype. 1650. Jamestown. Meet William Berkeley, appointed by King Charles II of England to govern colonial Virginia. He rules with an iron hand and enriches a small cadre of English landowners. They grow tobacco. The sweet leaf is gold. America's first road to riches. Crop. They kidnap and capture men Engaged in human trafficking And trap the African And if they can't steal the labor Then they use lies as lures Of false promises as tools To recruit all the poor from Bristol to Liverpool Little did they know that they were in for something cruel Jamestown was their destination When Berkeley looks at his servants, what does he see? Color, of course, but color doesn't mean much to a man of means. They're heathens, waste, dirty, diseased, lazy animals. I would sooner call my hound brother than a servant of any shade. Under God and by law, he has the right to whip, maim, starve, buy, or sell them at his pleasure. But he fears them. He should. The rich are few and the poor are many. It's almost impossible to imagine now, but the poor see themselves as one. They have a common bond and a common enemy. Together. 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 The Africans and English worked together. They labored and lived, prayed and made a life together. Stole, escaped, hold and wait together. They got lashed and went to jail together. Worked hard and catch hell together. It wasn't criminal for them to love together. Got married and had kids together. The colony was filled with different shades together. Mahogany, tan, olive, and beige together. Molasses, dark, chocolatey flavors together. Peach, bronze, amber, and brown. But very soon, life would change up in Jamestown. There's no lifetime slavery yet. The indentured Europeans and Africans can still buy their freedom. Released from bondage, they'd set out in search of land. For these new frontiersmen, freedom is a rotten promise. The rich own all the good soil, and the indigenous tribes desperately grasp for the rest, fighting for every acre they have left. The frontiersmen seethe with each new tax, each broken promise, each death, each rich man that grows richer, each poor man that grows poorer, until they can't take it anymore. 1676, time to take matters into their own hands. They cast one Nathaniel Bacon as leader, the son of an aristocrat who came to the frontier after squandering his inheritance. 
Under Bacon, they band together to take land from the tribes and power from Berkeley. Together. Get your guns, get your knives, first target is the tribes, kill the men, women, and the children. Hundred men turn into a thousand. A posse turned gorilla army is astounding. And don't go English, Angolan, Irish. Fought together, fought together to abolish all the tyrants and the snakes. Ready to mount the heads on stakes. Enough of these rich men, of these false men, corrupt men. Light the torches and set Jamestown ablaze. Let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. Let it burn. Jamestown put the ashes in a urn. A hundred years before the revolution. Africans and Europeans were in union. Let it burn, let it burn. The British never wanted us to earn. So bring the fire to the upper classes. We can make a better future from the ashes. Berkeley watches Jamestown burn, and he burns with vengeance. The waste must be cleansed from God's green earth. Behind a British gunship, retribution. Berkeley hangs 20 and scatters the rest into the wilderness. The rich of Jamestown know it could have been their own necks hanging from the end of a poor man's noose. To survive as rich men, as powerful men, they vow never to let the poor rise up again as one. But how? What scheme? What deception? In 1681, white will appear in a legal document for the first time in history when Virginia bans Africans from marrying whites. One law of dozens creating and separating the races. Blacks across the colonies will be enslaved for life. No longer treated as human, but as property. Poor whites were handed the whip. The rich exploited their ignorance. They traded rebellious plots for managing slave auction blocks, and any chance for both of their freedom was lost. It doesn't happen overnight, but the rich divided people by phenotype. Melanin, skin color, you dark, you light. Your life or death could be determined by the question, are you white? Well, are you white? Go ahead. Take a look in the mirror. Ask yourself, am I white? We are no longer allowed to marry. We are no longer allowed to start a family. We, we are, are no, no longer, longer allowed. allowed. Can we stay allowed? Should we stay inside? That we have a child? Can we stay alive? We're not coming out. Why are we vilified? Let's go underground. We are no longer allowed. allowed.